Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim Nazi ta'anamu wa ta'anim wa zakura wa tazkiru wa nafa'u indifa'u al-fara rasifada Wa al-hatha ala tamasuki fi kitabillahi wa sunati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam Wa du'a ila al-huda wa dalala ala al-khayar iftigha'a wa jilla Wa maradatihi wa qurbi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna sadaqal ilma ladani wal mashrab as-sufi al-hani wa hab yaghani Allahumma inna sadaqal ilma ladani wal mashrab as-sufi al-hani wa hab yaghani Allahumma inna sadaqal ilma ladani wal mashrab as-sufi al-hani wa hab yaghani Sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin Rabbi surah ala We are at verse Who remembers? 12 and 13 Alright, so basically we have finished uh, Why is 12 and 13? Innahu ya'alamu al-jahra Innahu ya'alamu al-jahra wa ma yakhba Wa nuyassiruka lil yusra Fazakkir in nafa'ati zikra Now we read it Sayazakkaru man yakhsha ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى لسه بيستوب كريك قد أفلح من تزكى هاي وذكر وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى Alright, so we began Surah Ala, right, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala proclaiming, right, uh, or, or in fact Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala instructing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by extension, right, the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, to proclaim the uh, the sanctified name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that is Most High, and of course when we say Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's name. Right, it is basically you know in us saying that or admitting that the only thing we know about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in his in his in reality or in his essence is his name. That is all we know. And we know that he exists, right? And we all we know about him about his essence is that his name is Allah, right? Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? All of the other names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are actually sifat. Right? They are actually traits of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by which we further uh, expand our understanding of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's revision. Eh? Right? Of, of when 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 it says Sabbihis Ma Rabbika Al A'la, right? The, the the highest the, the high name of your Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now because there's nothing else we can understand about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's why sifat nafsiya, right? The sifat of this of of the the essence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is wujud. Allah Mawjud. That's all we understand. We don't understand anything further than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala being uh, uh, existing. We don't understand anything at all of, of how or why or you know there, there is no how and there is no why <laughs> in the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is beyond our comprehension. The only thing we can comprehend is its existence. Right. So uh, so we actually uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as a behest of Rabbi Kalala. الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك لا سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله. Right, so the first three verses of Surah Ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions his uh, his his uh, bounty on the human being. Right, الذي خلق فسوى. Right, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is showing that in his bounty and in his uh, in his uh, favor on a human being, right, is that, is that not only did he create you, right, he actually created you and he fashioned you in a beautiful form, right, and he, uh, he decreed for you, but with the decree comes his guidance, right, so, so nobody can say, oh, it is decreed, you know, that, that I will be a, a sinner, right, and then he blames the decree, right, of course it's decreed, right, but the decree came with guidance, and you chose misguidance over guidance, so you cannot blame the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Like he's he's the one who made me a sinner. And you can't say that because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has decreed and He has guided. And the guided part here shows us that there is this indeed choice. Right? There is no, you know, uh, anyone who argues that there is no choice for a, for for a person in his existence, right? Is uh, I mean, they have not read the has not read the Quran, right? Nor has even thought about what is the purpose of the Quran and of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if nobody has any choice. 
Like what's the purpose, you know, of Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending down the Quran and sending out his messages one after another if human beings have no choice. Right? If we have no choice, then, then for what? Right? I mean, you think about it, for what? Like what do Allah send down prophets for? Right? He's, the, the very f- fact that we have the Quran and the very fact that we have a prophet right, to inform us what is good and what is evil, this is that very fact is enough as evidence that we have choice. Right? Otherwise, there is no need right, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do all of these things. Right, for uh, 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 as as proof for or against the human being. Right, فَجَعَلَهُ وَالَّذِي أَخْرَجَ الْمَرْعَى فَجَعَلَهُ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى And this last uh, thing that Allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned uh, of of his of his bounty onto the human beings, that he sent forth uh, foliage, right? He sent forth uh, plants. But again, in these plants, Allah subhanahu wa taala gives us an an example that how how in his lush greenery it became black and it became useless, right? Plants. Right, so just like that, human beings, right? They will, you will, you will actually come to an end. Sanukri uka falatansa illa ma sha Allah. Right? Again, Allah shows that this is this entire Quran is in the affair of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and nobody is to contend with the Quran. It's, it's, it's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will reveal whatever He wants to reveal to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can remove whatever He wants to remove. He can obliterate. He can do whatever He wants to do. Right, uh, if if he wants to, right? nobody can 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 argue with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Innahu ya'alamu Innahu ya'alamu ma Innahu ya'alamu al-jahra wa ma yakhfa wa nuyasiru kalil yusra fa zakir inna faati zikro. Right, so remind them. Right, if the reminder will benefit them. Saya zakaru ma yakhsha. I only the ones who have fear in their heart. I mentioned those who have fear here, they will not have fear in the next world, and those who have those who feel safe here. Right, they will not feel safe in the next world. Right, what do you mean by feeling safe? Right? So the last week, actually, my sister asked me a very uh, a good question, like, in a way. Right? Because when I went through all of the um, the virtues of Rajab, you know, if you fast how many days, you get what? If you fast how many days, you get what? And we know about the virtues of Ramadan, and we know about the virtues of, you know, there are special days in the year whereby, you know, you're, you're told if you fast this day, in the hadith, right, your sins of the previous year and the following year are all forgiven. Right, you're told, you know, that, that, that uh, those who uh, get Ramadan and they fast Ramadan, right, hoping for a reward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them all of their sins. Right, so she asked me a very important question. She says, okay, if you do all of these things, surely you will have hope. <laughs> right? you know, and surely you feel safe. Right, because like, you know, of, of the promise, lah, you know, right, like, you know, if you do, 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 do this, right, you get this, this, this right, in, in, in the hereafter. Right? I mean, in, in, in some sense, there is, a, there is a, a, a confirmation or a guarantee for you that inshallah your next world will be okay. Right? And in fact, I, in, in this class also, I mentioned that you know, if you do Surah Muluk every night, right, you confirm your, for your grave that there will be no punishment in your grave. And if there is no punishment in your grave, that means it's going to be smooth sailing up to uh, paradise. Right, so okay, so you're like, okay, okay, every night I'm going to read You know, I never finish with Ramuluk every night. Right, then, then she says, okay, if you do all of these things, then shouldn't you feel safe? <laughs> right, then you feel safe in this world. Right, it's, you, will still feel, still feel, uh, you will still feel safe in this world. Right, but then I, I also said to her that, that you know, you can't, uh, you can't feel safe here and then you feel safe there. You must feel fear here and then you will feel safe there. Right, so so the answer to that question, right, is a very simple answer. Right, so while you do all of these things, and you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's uh, promise is real, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's promise is real, right? The thing about it is that uh, you could very well, right, uh, reach to a point in your life whereby, right, you stop doing all of these things, right? And and that's from the hadith. So by some people, they can be doing the deeds of the people of paradise until there's nothing between them and paradise besides a hand span. And they slip and they fall into the hellfire, right? So, so while doing all of these deeds, right, it actually promises you, you know, uh, that you will have a good ending and all that. Right? It is on the condition, right, that you actually continue with it. And inshallah, you continue with it, right? So the fear that you feel is that one day you turn away, right? The fear that you feel is that one day, perhaps, Allahu alam, but may Allah protect us from it, right? You fear, you always fear that. You don't take it for 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 granted. Or the other part of fear is that you fear that you doing all these deeds is not sincere. So you do all these deeds, right, and then you're not so sure if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted them or not. Right? So because you don't know how sincere your deeds are. That's the fear of it. Right. And of course this is the way of the pious, the righteous, the sahaba. Right. There were so many sahaba, if all the sahaba are from his paradise, right? Ten were mentioned by name. Right, they are the, the ten who are promised paradise. Right? And all of them, to the end of their lives, never ever felt safe. 
right, that they will uh, they will enter into paradise. Even though it was on the tongue of Rasulullah SAW that they will enter paradise, like Sayyidina Omar, he said that if on a day of judgment a caller was to call, was to call out, saying everybody is in paradise except one person, right, he, he said he would think that that person is him. Right, he thinks that everyone in the paradise except one person, Sayyidina Omar, right, he said that I would think it's me. Right, it's me who is not in paradise. Right, he's somebody who Rasulullah SAW actually mentioned in a hadith, Omar is in paradise. Right, so, you know, Omar is in paradise. Right, so that is how we understand right, that you don't, I mean, you don't feel complacent about it and take it for granted. Right, you don't know, because I mean, I mean now's villa, but then there are people whom we know, right, I personally know, right, people who have left the religion. But while they were in the religion, they were doing all the sunnah, sunnah fastings, they were doing the sunnah prayers, they were doing all of these deeds that we have promised them uh, you know, a place in paradise, right? But then something happened in their life that caused them to leave the religion altogether, and maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will bring them back before they die. Allahu a'lam. I mean, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on this religion until we die, and then we'll ask slip, right? and to bring these people who have left the religion come back to the religion, right? Because, you know, subhanallah, in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that whoever leaves the religion, then whatever they have done from before that is wiped out. It goes down to zero, eh? It goes on to, I mean, the apostate is not like the original kafir. Right? The apostate was the one who knew the religion and left. Right? So, so, so the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, has handled these people is that whatever they have uh, done goes on to zero. And if they want to come back, the law on them is that they must qada every single thing that they missed. Qada. Prayers and fasting. Right? And also zakat. Right? If there was zakat. Right? So, so, I mean... <laughs> Right, so, but of course, the ulama say that if that will deter them from coming back, you don't tell them first, <laughs> and then come back first. And once the iman is strong, you tell them about it. Right, so that is the the the, the, the severity lah. Right, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, right, what say that say the karumai yaksha. Right, those of fear will remember. Right, they will they will take the reminder. Right, and 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 sometimes you know when when, when people advise you, right, or if you advise people against sin. Right, you will realize that the ones who will take the advice when you advise them against committing sins, the ones who will take the advice are those who have humility and they have fear. Right, they are afraid that their words, you know, how, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them to account for their words. Right, you see that, eh, right? So you actually you can you can you know, uh, like there was once my friend was telling me that you know like that she advised someone right, about something, you know, and there's and then, and, then, and it was correct like, what she advised. Right, and that person said, you know, uh, you know, you, you, they, they don't talk so much. You kind of thing, like, don't talk so much. It's a common answer, lah. You try to advise somebody, say don't talk so much, right? In a way, right? And then she was like, shouldn't that person just reflect on what I say, <laughs> right? And just 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 admit that she was wrong, right? Instead of trying to be defensive about it, which most people are actually anyway. You know, most of us, we are all we are all guilty of that. Like, we very get very defensive. The moment someone points out something wrong in us, and actually we shouldn't get defensive because we are human beings. Right. And here we just make mistakes. Right. But for some reason, right, we get defensive. Whenever anybody points out a, a fault in us, we get very defensive. Right. And my, myself guilty as you know uh, as well. Uh, right. Get very defensive whenever somebody fo- points out a fault. But in, in reality, human beings you're faulty. <laughs> We're all faulty. So she was saying that like, shouldn't she, you know, uh, at least admit to her mistake, right? Even if she is upset about it, admit to her mistake. Right. And then I said that, you know, it's one thing is human nature. Right, to not admit to their mistake, even though they know that it's a mistake, right? And very few people actually take reminders. Very few. The Quran, the Quran itself, right? Very few will be reminded. Right? Very few will take reminders. Very few will take advice. Very few will, you know, allow it. So, so, and and the ones who actually will humble themselves and hear the reminder and hear the advice are those Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says they are they have fear. So you say, so you say, so you say, 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 say zakkaru man yaksha. Right, the one who uh, who has fear, or oh, he will remember. Right? He has fear of the standing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He will take the reminder. Right, in Surah Yasin, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said, "In Surah Yasin, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, in the first page of Surah Yasin, Inna ma tunziru ma inta ba'an zikr wa khashya rahman bil ghayb, fa bashirhu bi maghfirati wa ajrin karim." Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what's that again? Innama tunziru ma'i taba'an zikra wa khashya rahmana bil ghaib fa bashiru ma'i khashya rahmana bil ghaib For surely, like the ones who will, who will be warned, like who are they? Right, the ones who follow the reminder. Like in Surah Yasin, in the first verse of Surah Yasin, at the bottom. 
you can flip to the page. Eh? <laughs> so you seen at the first page near the bottom, right? You find this ayat. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For surely it is only those. Right? The ones who will get the warning are the ones who follow the reminder. And right? follow the reminder can, can have a few meanings. The first meaning is that they keep reading the Quran. Right? That means the reminder, the Quran is the strongest form of reminder. So following the reminder, right, means that they, 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 they are they are seeking the Quran. They want to hear more and more and more and more and more reminder from the Quran. The second meaning of following the reminder is following Rasulullah himself. In the time of Rasulullah, means to follow him around right, and to keep hearing reminders from him. Right, the other meaning is that in our time is to follow the inheritors of the Prophet, which are the ulama. Right, so you on uh, you, you you go for classes, you go for uh, 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 lectures, you on uh, YouTube to hear to, to the ulama, to an alim. Right, so you're following the reminder. Because you, you, because you know as a human being, the moment you stop getting reminders, you just you, you will go back to your, norm, to, your, to your previous state. All human beings are like that. The moment the reminder stops, you fall back. Right? You, actually, you, 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 you relapse <laughs> right? into, your, into your previous state of being heedless. You should go back. Right? So it's actually dangerous lah, right? to actually not follow the reminder. Right? So Allah says in Surah Yasin, right? if you get the verse, you get, you get the verse or not? You all get the verse. <laughs> right, Allah says in Surah Yasin, right, they follow the reminder, وَخَشِيَ Rahman, right, And they fear the most merciful. They know He's the most merciful, but they fear Him. You see that? Right, so you see, they are not people who are complacent, nor are they lenient, nor, nor are they taking things uh, lightly. No. Right, they, are, they, they fear the most merciful. Knowing He's the most merciful, they still fear disappointing Him. Or they fear angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they know He's the most merciful. Right, so in Surah Yasin, MashaAllah, Allah says, وَخَشِيَ Rahman, Right, Bil Ghaib. Right, Bil Ghaib. The, the, the whole ayat in Surah Yasin, MashaAllah, there's so much to say about that one ayat. Right, so they, they fear the most merciful, Bil Ghaib. Right, in secrecy. No one knows about this fear, of, the, the, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah knows they actually have this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bil Ghaib. فَبَشِّرُهُمْ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ Right, so uh, فَبَشِّرْ Correct? فَبَشِّرْ uh, وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ right, so, so give them the good news right, of a complete forgiveness right, and a generous reward. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them that. Eh? So these people, it's from this ayat, lah, this is called ayats that, that uh, they try to tafsir each other. Right, so this ayat, in Surah A'la right, is linked to the ayat in Surah Yasin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَذَكَّرُ مَيْ يَخْشَى right, The ones who have fear, they will remember. وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring far away the wretched right, from paradise. جَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى The ha here, they say there are two, uh, uh, there is actually two possibilities. The ha here can mean the jinn. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the, 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 the rational people away from it. The it can refer to the, the reminder or the it can refer to paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, uh, will remove the wretched right, from any form of reminder right, because they persist on their sin. And here we have a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah sends the reminder to everyone. So we know from the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Ladi, is that قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى وَالَّذِي 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 قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى The one who decreed and then guided. Right? So now Allah is explaining right, that while He has guided, that means He sent His reminders, right, those who insist and they persist on their sins. Right? So the ashqa, right, the ashqa is the most wretched of wretched. Right? They are, the most, they are the, cruel, the most cruel of people. Right, the cruelest of people, right? The 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 transgressors, the oppressors. These are the ashqa, right? They are the worst of the worst of criminals, right? These people, they have gotten their reminder, but if they persist on their sin, what happens? They get pushed far away from any form of reminder, right? Because of their persistence on their sin. Right, and here's what the ulama say: whereby, when, because of their sins, they form a blackness over their heart. Right, it's a wall of you know of 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 crud, of 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 this black wall that is surrounding their heart that any reminder cannot penetrate into their heart. Right, but that is because of what their own hands have earned. 
right, their own wretchedness, their own evil they have done, that Allah, and that they persist on it even though they were being reminded not to do so, but they persist. Right, so after a while, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will push them aside and they will not get any reminder because they, they, they persist on it. And this is actually the, the, the danger of sin. Right, if someone actually has fear, right, they will never say, oh, I do sins now and I'll talk about later. You know, someone who really has fear of the hereafter, they will never say that. Right, because they understand what it means by committing sin. Right, you, you will be afraid that if I commit sin now, that's it for me. You know, if I do this one now, what if Allah does not let me survive to Tawbat? And what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seizes me at a point and commit the sin? And what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, uh, puts a, a, a wall over my heart and I cannot sida anymore? I can't see the guy, I can't see the truth. Right? And subhanAllah, you know, there are many people that we have, that we have met you know, in life whereby sometimes you know, no matter what reminder comes to them, right, it's just there's, there's, there's a blindness. And it's just a very scary state. That you yourself will, will reflect, you're thinking that, you know, what if that, that was me? You know, what if I actually go to that state uh, of being completely blind to any form of reminder and guidance and warning? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, that this happens when somebody rejects the reminder enough. When they keep rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. Right? They know it's sinful, they still do it. They know it's sinful, they still do it. Right? And they don't want to be reminded. Right? Then it will be blocked over them. And they will be put to the side. Right, the one that will rose in the greatest fire. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after saying all this last week, this is our previous lesson, eh? I just did a bit of a, a recap. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who purifies has succeeded. وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Allah mentions three things here. He, the one who is successful, what are his traits? His first trait, purification. Right? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ أَفْلَحَ means success, like succeeded. So his first trait is purification. مَنْ Purify what? Purify his iman, purify his akhlaq, purify his heart. I mean, of diseases of the heart. Right, so the one who has purified himself from within. The second uh, condition, وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Right, so وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ Right, the one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ That means one who remembers the name of Allah. Right, when you remember the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're, you're, you're constantly aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the second one is about taqwa. Fasalla and he prays. Right, so three things here. Right, so you see, salla is, is the physical worship right, that nobody can do without. Right, so it means the, the prayer itself is important. The second one is remembering Allah. Remembering Allah is having taqwa, having a constant fear and, and awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Second one. The first one is purify. Purify yourself right, of all the diseases that is in your heart. That is stopping you from hearing all these reminders. That is stopping you from changing yourself. That is stopping you from, from uh, 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 doing as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Right, so purify. So the first is purify. Right, then remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then physical worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who does these three things, they are successful. Right? So in our religion... You can't do without purification. You cannot. Right? You must try your best to purify your heart. Right? You can't do without remembrance of God. Right? Because if you pray without remembering God, then your prayers are all, uh, they're, they're all empty. And Rasulullah s.a.w. said in a hadith, every person will get of his prayer what he was mindful of. Right? So you only get of your prayer what you are mindful of. Right, so if you're not mindful, I mean, your mind is all, all over the place, right, you know, you're not getting any, any part. That means, uh, the entire part is a blank. Right, so if you recite your prayer, you're mindful. Right, so the angels write down for you the rewards. Right, and then your mind goes, goes elsewhere. It becomes a blank state. Right, blank, 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 blank. Right, and then maybe towards the end, you're like, eh, almost finishing the prayer already. And you come back and you try to focus on your prayer again. Right, and then again, you get rewarded for that part. So wherever the, wherever the remembrance happens, that's where reward happens. Wherever your mind goes away, that is where blank, the, the, the blank parts happen. Right, like, kind of like, you know, <laughs> blank memory. Lah. 
is that your prayer? So that's from the high Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So three things eh, physical worship, remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala at all times, especially during physical worship, right? And the purification of your inward, right? So a believer is not a believer if he is wretched on the inward, even if he does all the outward acts of worship. He's not a true believer. He is a believer, but he's a he's a weak believer right? or a wretched believer. And whereby his inward is still uh, diseased. Bal tu'thirun al-hayat al-dunya wal-akhiratu wal-akhiratu khayru wa abqa. And here Allah subhanahu wa taala says the main disease in the human being. Right? What is stopping him from purifying himself? What is stopping him from remembering Allah? And what distracts him from the prayer? What? What is it? That Allah says. Allah points to us exactly the problem. Right? Why can't you purify? Rather, you prefer the life of this world. That's why your prayer is not focused. Right? That's why you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You prefer life of this world. Right? That's why you don't purify yourself. Right? Because the, 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 the deepest, uh, most difficult disease in a human being is love of the world. I said, Rasul Sam said in the hadith, "Hubbu dunya rasu kulli khatiya." Right, so "Hubbu rasu kulli khatiya." Right, the love of this world it is the source of every wrong action. And Imam Ghazali says, right, you flip the statement and you get "Bughd uh, dunya," the hatred of this world is the source of every righteous action. I mean, if you, if you flip the statement uh, on its end, right, so so. If love of this world is a source of every wrong action, then it's correct to say that hatred of this world is a source of every right action. Right? And we know every feud or every uh, disagreement or every fight or every uh, oppression, every form of evil in this world, it goes down to people coveting the world. Even they're coveting money or uh, stage, uh, status or fame, Right, whatever or praise, whatever lah, of the world that they, they actually covet, that they, 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 they actually uh, uh, vying for, right, has driven them to doing all of the evils that they are doing. I can think of any evil in this world, any evil, cheating, money, right, love of money, uh, backbiting, love of uh, destroying other people's uh, status, right, name, destroying their name. Because somehow or other you want to raise your name, Allahu Alam, Backbiting, right? What else? Right? If you think of uh, wars, right? all of the wars actually go back down to money. It all goes back down to money. And right? what else? Right? Shirik, right? Shirik in, in if you, depending on which shirik you're talking about, right? But if you look at the, the, the shirik at the time of Rasulullah Islam, the, the Arabs at that time, right? Shirik was more of a political power than anything else. It was to to to, to maintain power, right? So the, those who are higher class, right? They will hold all the idols to themselves. Right, it's also for economy to bring in the trade. Right, so it's about dunya. Right, that's why they, they didn't want to leave their idols. They, wanted, they didn't want to uh, change all idols, you know, remove all idols and they only have one God that is accessible by everybody. For them, the monopolizing of God is a good idea. You can monopolize God. Right, make people come to your land and trade there right, because you have to come here and trade here. Right, then from there, money comes in. Right, love of the world, again. Right, again, any, any sin... Think of any sin, right? any wrongdoing, you will find the source of it in a human attachment <coughs> to things of this world. Any sin. I can't think of a single sin. Because something in the hadith is true. Right? Love of this world is the source of every wrong action. So it's impossible for you to find a single sin right, whereby is the source of it is not this world. Right? It's impossible because the hadith is true. Right? And also hatred of this world is the source of every righteous action. So selflessness, Right, charity, right, giving, uh, you know, of, of your of your time and yourself. Right, it means you you don't care, right, to actually uh, uh, gain gain money or gain prestige or gain uh, popularity. Right, all you care about is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the hereafter. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He hits it, you know, on the nail here. Of course, like, it's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He knows what is our problem. Like, why aren't you purifying yourself? Why aren't you remembering Allah? And why is your prayer having so many gaps in there? One problem: love of the world. Uh, your mind is still there. So when you come to prayer, you, 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 can't, you can't leave behind right, what it has been occupying your mind. Right? Whereas you're supposed to, five times a day, Allah is asking of us, five times a day, 
Whatever is happening at your desk at work, right? Leave it at the desk, right? Go and pray. Don't have it ringing in your mind, right? Whatever people say to you or talk about you or talk against you or behind your back, whatsoever you hear, right? you're supposed to leave it where it is, right? And don't bring it to the prayer mat. Prayer mat is you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really allow us to focus on this. It's really, my teacher say it's really, it's really, if people find it hard to concentrate in their prayer, it's only one problem. You're so attached to your dunya. You can't leave it for five minutes just to pray. You have to bring it with you. Why? And we know it is definitely possible for a human being to detach. You can. You can actually detach. How come we know that it's possible? If you're in, engrossed in the book, if you're engrossed in uh, a, a movie, all right, suddenly all your worldly worries, you forget. Because your mind is being engrossed in something. Right, so the reason, so that is that is fact in itself that a human being can engross themselves in something and forget everything else. Right? If, if people hear, for, for me, I, I love to read books, and for me, when I read books, halas, you know, I am, <laughs> I don't notice anybody around me because I'm engrossed in my book. I am focused in my book, and we know that happens to you. Whatever you like to do, if you're doing it, what happens? You forget your work. You forget your your work. You forget what people say. You forget everything. You just engross in whatever you're doing. How come our prayer are not like that? Like how come in the prayer, of course you got the enemy lah, enemy is attacking you, right? You blame the enemy, right? right? But same thing, we're not engrossed. Right? The ulama, the awliya, they are engrossed in their prayer. Right? So, so to the point that some sahaba, right, when he was told that he, he had to actually amputate his leg, right? and they said, to amputate your leg, we need to give you right, a pill, right, basically uh, anesthesia, right, a pill right, for, so that you, can, uh, you won't feel the pain. Of us amputating your leg right? And the sahaba is a sahaba Who said The pill Will it cause me To lose consciousness right? And then they said Yes right? It is actually A, a, a full anesthesia right? It will cause you To lose consciousness Then the sahaba said I cannot bear Not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For even a moment I don't want to lose consciousness Because right? like, I can't bear right? Not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For a moment Then he said Okay Tell you what don't give me the pill Wait until I go into prayer When I go into prayer When I go into sujood Amputate my leg Because I can tell you I will not feel it And I will not know that it's there right? you, you, you are, You're cutting off my leg So they say okay <laughs> So he went into prayer And he went into sujood And true enough They, they amputated his leg right? And he had not felt anything at all And after he gives salams He turned to them and he was like Why don't you do it? And then they said We did it <laughs> we, we cut off your leg then he looked, oh yes, you did. <laughs> right. He was completely oblivious that they actually cut off his leg. And he didn't feel anything at all. And right. mashallah, he refused the anesthesia because he didn't want to forget Allah even for a moment. He couldn't, he couldn't even bear it. Right. To forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a moment, he couldn't bear it. And there are other sahaba that did, whereby they know uh, they had to do some sort of operation on themselves, right, whereby they would, they would stop them from, from, from performing sujood. Right, and they will reject this kind of uh, thing because they want to perform sujud even though they are, uh, they have to suffer with the pain. And there are those different levels. Lah. Right, but you see how people of the past, and these are levels eh, of people and how they actually go into prayer. Right, they go into full focus in their prayer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, purification, remembering Allah's name, right, and uh, the prayer, all of these things are destroyed because of what? بَلْ تُؤْسِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ dunya. Right, rather, you, you, you prefer the life of this world. Right, rather, you don't, you, you're, not, you're not focused. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى right, So, and, and he says here, and, like, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a sense, he's saying to us, this doesn't even make sense. Like, why are you so obsessed with this dunya? It doesn't even make sense. Because the akhirah is better and forever. So while you're praying in your five times a day prayer, and Allah is trying to, Allah is trying to, 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 to reason with a human being. Right? Reason with, with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're in your prayer. You're working for your akhirah. That is better for you and it's forever. But your entire person is obsessed with your dunya that is, that is not forever. And is not even worth anything. Right? But your whole, your whole being is obsessed there while you are praying over here. Does it even make sense? And does it even is it even right right that that, 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 you, that you can't even pull away from your from your dunya for five minutes five times a day, 
Just do this. You have 24 hours in your dunya. Right? Allah is just asking us to just do this. And, I'm, and for me, I'm, I'm going on, on about it because more for myself, right? Really. Unless you rush through our prayer. Right? If, you know, subhanAllah, if we just to f- focus, you know, even for a few moments in our prayer here and there, right, you, 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 there will be a change in your life. Right? If, and uh, can you imagine if you focus the entire prayer, right? entire four agats, right? There was a, there was a story in, in Darimla right, by a sheikh said to his student, you know, and, and back then uh, in Hadramaut, they love the sarong that comes from Southeast Asia. Right? <coughs> to them, it's like, you know, like a price, pricey uh, piece of clothing. Right? They love the batik, lah, the sarong batik. Right? So, there was one shade that said to his student in, in Hadramaut, right, if any of you can swear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell me that you focus completely in two rakats, it means not a single lapse, right? not a single lapse in your, in, your, in your focus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two rakats only. Right. If any of you can uh, can can guarantee for me by the name of Allah, to the kind line, right? Then I will give you. Uh, you know, uh, I have two sarongs. Right. Okay, they came from <laughs> from from Asia, and the green and the blue one. Right. And I will give you one of them as a gift. Right. So of course, all of these students, because it was something that was that was you know, <laughs> the dunya we gift, but still you know, it made them it made them uh, strive right strive for it. So there was this one student. That story lah. He's the one student whereby he, uh, he okay, he prayed to rakats and he focused the entire batu rakats. The whole of the rakats he was focused on his prayer. He didn't even his mind didn't even stray at all. Then at his atahya, right before he was about to give salams, right, the thought came to him: Will I choose the blue or the green one? <laughs> right, the thought came to him: Oh, the blue or the green one? And Allah, right before the salams came, the thought, <laughs> the dunya came in, the dunya came in. The one, the blue or the green one? Now that he told his teacher, that I was focused the entire time, right? But you had to dangle dunya in front of my eyes, <laughs> so my mind went to the dunya, right? Because it's this distraction, distraction. I know the teacher was trying to do it to them. He was showing them that the dunya is the only cause, it's the only problem. A lot of people they come to, they come up. My students they come up to me and say, "How do I increase my khushu? How do I increase my khushu?" And I can say a lot of things. I can say, you know, do your wudu well. I can say surah nas before your prayer. I can say, you know, uh, a lot of things, you know, to prepare yourself for the prayer. By the end of the day, if you're not going to detach yourself from the dunya, it's, it's not going to work. Nothing is going to work until you detach yourself from the dunya. Right? So he says here, right? So, well, akhirah tu khairu wa abqa. Right? And the akhirah is better and everlasting. Right? We mentioned the story, the, 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 the situation before. Like about the shed and the mansion. You remember the story? It's not the shed and mansion, sorry. <laughs> and the shed and the mansion whereby, you know, a sheikh once said, it was Mama Zali, if I'm not wrong. Mama Zali said, like, if, or one of the ulama, if someone was to be offered, like, a shed, right, and a mansion, right, and this person is homeless, but the condition is that the mansion can disappear at any time. And the shed, Will last forever, right? The shed is not gonna go, not gonna disappear. The mansion can be taken away from you at any time. The shed, no one will take it away from him. Like a homeless person with no wealth will say to himself, "Of course, I'll choose the shed because mansion, you know, as 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 great as it is, I don't know when it's gonna go, right? And I and I would want to be left without any home, right? I'll choose the shed." And so the ulama say, "So how then is it that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala?" Right, has offered us between a shed that will disappear at any time and a mansion that is forever. How is it that we choose a shed? You know, so it's giving an analogy between dunya and akhirah. Right, the dunya is a shed that will disappear at any time. And, and the akhirah is a mansion that is forever. Yeah, so, so they flipped it. So you see, if, if it was the other way around, a mansion that was appeared at any time and a shed that is forever, anybody would say, I would choose the shed. Right? So now the ulama say, so how <coughs> ridiculous is it that if the affair was switched and you have a shed that was appeared at any time and a mansion that is forever, you choose the shed? Like how, what kind of, what kind of, they say, what kind of uh, uh, idiosity they say in Arabic, eh? Like, hamka. Right? Uh, what kind of idiosity is that? 
that you choose to shed the kutub at any time and you neglect and you don't choose to mention this forever. You understand? Because right? if it was the other way, you still would choose the shed, right? But now the mention is the one that's forever. Right? The, the akhirah is your mention that's forever. And your dunya is the shed that is for a while. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ تُؤْسِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيِّرُ وَأَبْقَى Right, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the hereafter is better for you and it is forever. Right, why do you choose? Why do you choose something that is low? Dunya is from the word dani. Right, dani means low. Right, dunya. Right, dani. I'm not sure why people are named uh, dania. Right, dania. Right, dania means, it can mean, it can mean, it can mean close if it's a dal. Bonya got no meaning. <laughs> dania got meaning. I said, Dania, Dania means close. Can mean close or can mean low. Right, so maybe it means close lah. <laughs> right, so Dania. Right, so because it's from the word dunya. You know, same word as uh, dunya. Right, so it, uh, so Masina Muhammad, right, so, so Masina Muhammad, the, the, the word dunya, it means low, lowly. Right, so in its word itself lah, right, it's lowly. Don't go for it. There's a hadith here from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alright, this is uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by Abu Dhar. Uh, he said, "I entered the mosque, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned to me and he said, Rasulullah was in the mosque lah. So I entered the mosque. Rasulullah was in the mosque, and he said to me, 'For surely the mosque has a greeting.'" And then he said, "When what is the greeting of the mosque, ya Rasulullah?" And he said, two rakaats. Right? You pray these two rakaats. Right? So it, uh, he said, O oh, Rasulullah. So, so this is one of the hadiths that speaks, speaks about Tahatul Majid. Lah. Right? The beginning of the hadith speaks about Tahatul Majid. The, the main part of the hadith is coming. Right? This is at the beginning part. He told Abu Dhar pray Tahatul Majid. <laughs> right? This is one of the, of one of the uh, dalil right? of Tahatul Majid. If anybody was to argue with you, there is no such thing. The hadith right here. Okay? <laughs> there is such thing as Tahatul Majid. Two rakaats. Right? And then he says here, and uh, rakaatan tarka'uhuma Qultu ya Rasulullah Hal, hal anzal Allahu alayka Shay'an mimma kana fi Suhfi Ibrahim wa Musa Right, so now he says Ya Rasulullah Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to you Anything that was in the pages Or the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa And anyway, this hadith came about because We're about to end the last line Inna hadha la fi suhfi al-ula Suhfi Ibrahim wa Musa, right? Before I go into the topic of that, I will go speak about the hadith first. So Abu Dhar, he asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, has Allah uh, revealed to you anything that is also in the scriptures of Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa? And Rasulullah says, O oh, Abu Dhar, recite, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّ وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّ بَلْ تُؤْسِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى إِنَّ هَذَا لَفِ السُّحُفِ الْأُولَى Suhafi Ibrahim wa Musa Kultu right, so, he says, so he says Oh Abu Dhar Recite And he recite the entire verses of Surah Ala And he says Kultu Ya Rasulullah Fama kanat suhafu Musa right, Qala Qala kanat Ibran Kulluha right, so, so, so Abu Dhar said Okay Ya Rasulullah I know the verse right, But tell me What is in the scriptures of Nabi Musa Rasulullah SAW said uh, The scriptures of Nabi Musa They were all uh, uh, I brought any examples. Right? It means Allah will give, will strike examples for people to take, uh, to to take from. Right? Uh, uh, and and in it, right, it is mentioned. It is it is mentioned in the scriptures of Nabi Musa. Right? How how surprising the affair of the one who has certainty in death. Right? In death, right? How he is. Right, so 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 in the scriptures of Nabi Musa, right, there is basically uh, you call it similitudes, right, similitudes or basically examples, whereby Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in the, in, the, in the scriptures, right, how amazing or how strange lah, anjabat, right, how strange is the affair of the one who has certainty in death? How does he? How is he joyous if he knows he's going to die? It means how does he find joy knowing that death is on his, you know, just coming coming after him. 
and also you know how strange the affair of the one who has rinti in the fire and how does he laugh and there's a hadith about Rasulullah said if you knew what I knew you would cry more and laugh less right and uh, and of course he said that and, and the other verses by say that he says that you know, and they cry they, they laugh a lot and they cry little right? but and those who laugh a lot and cry little then in the next world they will cry a lot and they will <coughs> laugh little right it be the other way around. Right, and then he says that and how I mean, how how strange the affair of the one who sees this dunya, right? And how its people, uh, how its people change, right, Because of this dunya and how it affects people, and then he is satisfied with just having dunya, right? So Subhanallah, right, how he see how you see the dunya changes. Or even it could also mean that how the du- how people pass through the dunya. That means the dunya is passed from hand to hand to hand to hand to hand. Right? It never stays in one hand. Right? It just gets, gets being passed on. Right? And we know that about money. Money is the most is, uh, the, the clearest example. It comes into your hand, then it goes to somebody else's hand. It comes to your hand, it goes to somebody else's hand. Right? And we know for everything in the dunya, it just goes through hands. That's all it is. So how, how strange the affair of the one who sees the dunya and he sees uh, it changing right in the hands of people right, going from hand to hand and then he is satisfied with his dunya means he's content right? he's at peace having his dunya and that's all he wants and how strange is the affair and how strange is the affair of the one who has certainty right that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed affairs in his life but he gets angry when things happen to him I don't know how, how strange right, his affair and right, he says how strange you remember all, all of them and the outstretch is the affair of the one who has certainty, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold him to account. Yet he does not work for that day where he'll be held to account. So all of these things are in, uh, in, the, in the scriptures of Nabi Musa. And, Nabi, and also you said, uh, yeah, of scriptures of Nabi Musa. Right? So how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it's ibra. Ibra meaning like, it's kind of like sentences, you know, to make people think. Right. Examples to make people think. And Abu Dhar also, another hadith from Abu Dhar, anhu. Let me to repeat the first hadith. Because I was translating it on the spot. <laughs> let to repeat the first hadith. Okay, so the first hadith, right, from Zainal Abu Dhar al Ghifari, right, who came in to the mosque and some said to him, Oh Abu Dhar, for surely the mosque has his, has his welcome, right, or his greeting. And he says, What is the greeting? And he says, Two raka'ats, right, that you pray two raka'ats. So you pray two raka'ats. Then he says, Ya Rasulullah, has Allah sent down to you anything from the books of uh, Ibrahim and Musa? And he said, Oh Abu Dhar, recite right, from the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qad aflaha man tazakka, right, and until the end of the ayat. Right, so, Inna hadha la fi suhuf al-ula, for surely these are in the scriptures of before, suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa, the pages of Nabi Musa and Nabi, uh, Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa. Then he says, Ya Rasulullah, and what is in the place of Nabi Musa? Then he says, similitudes, right? So, uh, Ibran, right? That means, uh, uh, basically, sentences that show, that make people think, the kind of sentences. Right? So, the first thing, kullaha. All of it is this kind of sentences, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, and it says something else. There's something, there's something else. Right? That how we just, we just went through. The kind of, the kind of uh, phrases in the entire pages of Nabi Musa, alayhi salam. So the first one is right, how, uh, how, how, how strange the affair of the one who has certainty in death, right? but he, how does he find joy? And how strange is the one who has certainty in the fire? How does he laugh? How strange is the one who sees the dunya and he sees it changing with, its, uh, with his people? How does, he have, uh, how does he have peace in it? Right, how strange is the one who is certain, certain about a decree? How does he, and then he gets angry with it. And how strange is the one who is the certainty of the reckoning and the hisab, right, the reckoning and accounting? And how does he not act for it right, or prepare for it? Another hadith, an Abidhar, Aydan, right, from Abidhar also, I said to Rasulullah, O Rasulullah, and what is in the pages of Ibrahim? Right? So he asked about Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right? He says, قَالَ كَانَتْ أَمْثَالًا كُلُّهَا So Nabi Ibrahim's uh, scriptures are amthalan examples. Right? Examples. And Nabi, Nabi Musa, Ibrahim, Nabi Ibrahim, amthalan examples. All of it are examples. Right? So for example, 
right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the scriptures of Nabi Ibrahim, Oh, you king, right? Oh, you king, right? Who has been trial, tried, right? And for surely you are deluded. For surely I didn't, I didn't send you, right? For you to gather this dunya, right? Part of it or all of it, right? But, but, but rather I sent you, right? To spread my da'wah, right? Walakinni ba'astuka litarudda anni da'wat al-mazlum. Fa inni la arud la arud la arudha walaw kanat min fam kafir wa kana fiha amsal wa 'ala al-'aqil an yakuna lahu sa'a yunaji fiha rabbaha rabbahu wa sa'a yufakkir fiha fi sun'in fi sun'illahi 'azza wa jalla وَسَأَ يَخْلُو فِيهَا لِحَاجَتِهِ مِنَ الْمَطْعَمِ وَالْمَشْرَبِ وَعَلَى الْعَاقِلِ أَنْ لَا يَكُونَ طَامِعًا إِلَّا فِي ثَلَاثَةٍ تَزَوَّدْ تَزَوَّدَ لِلْمَعَادِ وَالْمُرَمَّحِ لِمَعَاشِ وَلِلْزَّتِ فِي غَيْرِ مُحَرَّمٍ وَعَلَى الْعَاقِلِ أَنْ يَكُونَ يَسِيرًا بِزَمَانِهِ wa muqbilan ala sha'nihi wa hafidhan li lisanihi wa wa man 'adda kalamihi man 'adda kalami min 'amalihi qul kalla kalamahu illa fi ma ya'nihi qala qultu fa ma kana fa ma kana suhfu musa qala kana 'ibran ila akhirihi wa qawluhu murammah li ma'ashi ay islahihi Right, so here he says here, so the, 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 the example of Nabi Ibrahim's uh, scriptures, right, so basically he has, script, he has examples in it, right, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses those who are kings, right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent you all, right, to this dunya, right, and of course when Allah addresses the kings, the common person is also being addressed, because if the kings are being reprimanded, then what more about the common person who is also amassing this dunya, right, Allah did not send you here to be deluded, right, and to amass this dunya, I rather I is for you right to fear the dua right or the, the dua of the oppressed right fear oppressing other people that right? because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reject the dua of the oppressed even if he is a disbeliever and we know that in the hadith right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua of the oppressed even from a disbeliever against the believer Right, so if you oppress, you know, khalas, right? The du'as go straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And he says that, uh, that, that for the one who has intellects, the aqil, right, the one who has a mind, for him to spend every day a moment calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a moment reflecting on Allah's creation around him, a moment being alone and away Right, so being alone and away from the creation, right, a moment right, by which he goes and he finds his own sustenance, right, and a moment. Right, so the, the, there's four moments. Eh? Right, so the first a moment whereby he calls unto his Lord. Second one is a moment whereby he reflects on the creation. Then a moment to be uh, alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, and that is with the first one. And the last one is that and for him to look for his sustenance. Right, to, spread, to spread his time out in this way. Right, for the one who has in, 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 in the scriptures of Nabi Ibrahim is mentioned. Right, and that he should not uh, have tamak. Right, he should not covet right, things of this dunya. Right, in, in, the, in, the, in the scriptures of Nabi Ibrahim it is mentioned. Right, so that's why it is said here in the ayat that for surely this, this was mentioned in the earlier scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa. Right, because all the, the only thing that was that, that was that, that, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keeps repeating in the scriptures of Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa is the denunciation of this world. That's all. Right, from beginning to end, the entire scripture is all about renouncing this world. Right, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says it's in the two scriptures. Right, so here, and it also says here that it's on the one with intellect. Right to be. Uh, to be focused on his own affair, to guard over his tongue, and to count his words as part of his deeds. 
So his words can be good or it can be evil. Right? To count his words as part of his deeds. Right? And to stay away from what does not concern him. Right? And this is also in the, in the scriptures of Nabi Ibrahim. Okay, this last part, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa, right? specifically these two prophets. And there are many other prophets right, that we know about. And a lot of them actually got scriptures. Right? A lot of them actually got scriptures. So why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specify Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa? And the answer is actually very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifies Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa because Nabi Ibrahim is the pride of the Arabs. And the Arabs in the time of Rasulullah they were proud of Nabi Ibrahim. And they were proud and they were descendants of Nabi Ibrahim even though they did not hold on to the teachings of Nabi Ibrahim. And but they were proud that they were descendants. The Jews, in the time of Rasulullah Islam, they were proud of Nabi Musa. Right? And they were proud, they are descendants of Nabi Musa, and they are proud that, that Nabi Musa is their prophet. Even though they, didn't, they don't hold on to the teachings of Nabi Musa. It's an irony. Right? And that is the way that, you know, may Allah protect us, but Muslims might fall into also. Many Muslims are very proud of their prophet. Right? They love Rasulullah Islam very much. Majority, even the, the worst of Muslims. Right, you cannot you cannot insult the prophets of Allah alaihi wasallam, right? But how many of them follow him? Right, they have a lot of pride when it comes to a lot of pride about the prophets of Allah alaihi wasallam, which is a good thing, it's a good trait, right? But right, like the Jews and the Arabs of the past, right? They they they, they hold these prophets in such high esteem, but they don't hear a single thing the prophet says. They don't they don't pay attention to anything the prophet does, right? So they don't they don't follow the, the guidance of the prophets of Allah alaihi wasallam. Right, that is the irony. So, so, and Allah ends up the surah by saying, this is in the earliest scriptures, the scriptures of the very prophets that you all are proud of. This prophet Muhammad is in their line, right? And he's doing the exact same thing that they used to do. So if you all are proud, oh Jews and, and Arabs, if you all are proud of Ibrahim and Musa, salam, then you should be following this prophet, right? To show your loyalty, to Nabi Ibrahim or your loyalty to Nabi Musa, you should embrace his prophet also. And because he's, all, he's, he's, he's preaching the same thing that Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa has preached. And so Allah subhanahu ends off with Nabi Ibrahim and Nabi Musa because these are the two prophets whom the people of the time of Islam, right, the Jews and the Arabs, right, they were very proud of. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ends off Surah A'la. Right, alhamdulillah. Any questions about this? We should finish Surah A'la quite early, eh? You have quite some time left. Huh? The the main the main uh the main key to that, right, is that okay, the definition of dunya is whatever distracts you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. This definition. Okay, whatever distracts you or makes you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called dunya. Right? So, by the definition, a lot of things that you do in life can count as dunya by your decision or it can count as akhirah by your decision. Right? So, you choose whether you're making it dunya or akhirah. Right? So, if your job, you're striving for it, you're striving for position, if you put in sincere and righteous intentions, it becomes an akhirah work. <coughs> Right? It becomes the work of the akhirah and not of the dunya. Right? But of course, you have to be sincere to your intentions. Lah. Right? Uh, and, all, and at the same time, right, acts of worship, if they are, the intentions in there are all corrupt and it's all for fame or it's all for praise or it's all for whatever, then even like something as, as, as uh, noble as memorizing the Quran can be an act of dunya. It can. If someone memorizes the Quran only to be said, oh, how beautiful a reciter, you know, oh, how, and to win competitions and to be praised by his voice and whatsoever, nothing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his memorization of his Quran has become a distraction for him from Allah, ironically, but it has become, right? And, up, you know, it can really go both ways. <laughs> it's really up to you. It's, it's your decision, right? Whether you want to make your, your work dunya or akhirah, it's really up to you. How much of Allah subhanahu you remember in it and how much of Allah subhanahu you actually forget in it. And it's also basically, you, de- you, de- you define what is dunya and what is akhirah for yourself. You define. Right? And you make, it, you make sure that all that you do is under akhirah. Inshallah.
That's why they say you can actually work and 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 uh, you know do what you do to gain money, right? And make it all akhirah based. And you should be doing that. You shouldn't be wasting your every day from nine to five. Right? If you're working nine to five, right? If you if you're, you shouldn't be wasting your nine to five entire thing dunya. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be making your nine to five akhirah, right? By 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 correcting your intentions, okay, in doing it. Another question. Another question. You look so tired. <laughs> so sleepy. You want to stop there? Cause yeah, no, you want. <laughs> it's okay. Or you want to continue in surah Tariq? Huh? Surah Tariq. Can eh? Can. You can drink some water. <laughs> so tired. <laughs> huh? Water break. Okay, water break. We can drink water. Drink some water. Intentions as well, yes. Like <laughs> you must, but it has to be intentions. Ah. Means you're, you're, you're intending to do this because you want that position because, right? So you can say, you can say because it pays more, right? It pays more, so therefore I don't have to work as much because I have a higher, uh, a higher salary. I have to work as much and I can spend more time doing other things that are Im- that's important to me, my religion and my family. Right? So I mean, can you have the kind of intention if you're, if you're buying for a higher position that you feel with a higher pay and less time? With a higher pay, more time. Eh? <laughs> that's what happened. Eh? <laughs> higher pay, more time. Eh? Uh, yeah, then, then you have to really juggle it. Uh. <laughs> Right, so if, if 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 higher pay means more time for me, I prefer a lower pay with pay and spending less time on my job and having like enough pay, enough pay to survive, and then having the rest of my time, you know, with my family and uh, studying and improving my ibadah and everything like, Because I mean, as much as you can make work and ibadah, ibadah itself is necessary. I mean, to to pray and to worship and to fast and to zikir and all that to have the, those moments in the day. But you're not rushing for something, it's actually necessary for, for every for every soul. You still need it. Right? So even while while work can be ibadah, don't just make work your only ibadah. <laughs> right? You must have the other types of ibadah, right? Because your soul actually thrives on it. Right? So it is 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 really you must you must really see the moment you put in your intentions, you're actually guided. Allah will guide you into thinking how, like do you really want this? <laughs> Like, do you really want to go into this? Knowing, you know, and if you can't think of good intentions, then that's a red light for you. Right? That's actually, you know, a, a glaring red light. Like, why are you doing this? You can't think of a good intention right? or a righteous intention. You can't think of, why am I doing it? Right? And then you have to admit to yourself, oh, I'm actually doing it just because, you know, just because whatever, lah, of, of the dunya. Right? Then you stop, you stop in your tracks. So, so intentions, it actually guards you. It guards you from going... Where it where where people will go to in their thirst for dunya, right? Because when you put it, your attentions down, you 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 you're able to d- differentiate what are you doing right, with your life. Right, so if you can, <laughs> if you do it, um, okay, I want to get that high high pool of higher rank because I want to show that Muslims are not, you know, to be belittled as the world. Okay, if you want to show that, right, it means like oh, we can make it lah. Mm-hmm. You know, in the sense that we can. We can make it. <laughs> yeah, no, we can make it. You, you can, you can show that, right? But then, you uh, that you that yeah. By the end of the day, like, we don't really have to prove ourselves, you know, <laughs> right? Because at the end of the day, you know, akhlaq, volunteerism, you know, good works. These are all, you know, because like, even if you reach a high level, after people forget about you anyway. That you're there. <laughs> More or less, can but they actually don't really care that you're there and you're a Muslim. They actually do care. <laughs> it's only short lived. Then after after a while, jam, you're just stalking your way. <laughs> you're working so hard. Right, so for me, I'm on the part whereby, if I'm content with what I'm earning, I don't actually go further. <laughs> I mean, that's my my opinion. I'm not saying that you should do that, right? It's your opinion because the the the, the ulama of the past, sahaba. They work only half the day 
because basically they work for the day, <laughs> and the rest of the day is for their own ibadah. Now, of course, you can do that lah. I mean, if all of them, you can actually do that if you want to. <laughs> it's really up to you. But I would say don't, don't, don't drown your day in work. Try not to. If you find that you are doing that, then it's a red light lah. It's a red light. <laughs> don't drown yourself. Okay. Alright. Any other questions? No, no question. I'm going to reset Surah Tariq. Okay. Alhamdulillah. We are going into the longer Surah of Jus Alma. Full page, full page eh. After Surah Tariq. When they have long, long, long ones. MashaAllah. When, but all of them have the same theme. Almost all of them. Same theme. Which is the Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment. And we and mentioned before, that the Arabs had two issues with the Aqidah that Rasulullah brought. Right? Two main issues. The first issue is uh, eliminating all the idols. That's the first issue they had. It. They had Rasulullah. Eh? Right? Second issue is believing in hereafter. Yes, the next one. Right, these are two things that d- does not run well with them. Right, so the, the 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 eliminating of the idols is because it's political power. It's all a political game for them. Right, idols are there. People come in economy, right, and gives them some sort of like you know uh, status as the custodians of the gods. You know, in a way. So a bit, all right. But but they, they 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 see it that way. So to remove the idols, problematic for them. The next word. So it's interesting that you see these people. <laughs> you see, Allah put Surah Allah in the middle of Juz Amma. Right? We're going to go into the first half of Juz Amma. Right? They speak about whatever will happen on the last day to scare them. Right? And also on the, the resurrection. Right? All, almost all the surahs will speak about it. Right? In, the, in the first part of Juz Amma. This was this was revealed in the books of Nabi Musa and Nabi uh, Nabi Ibrahim, right? Which means that these Arabs, their aqidah that they had at the point where some came, that they claim came from Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, they actually omitted a major part of the aqidah which was the hereafter. They completely removed that part, right? Because that part was not. So favorable lah. I mean, who wants to be questioned, right? <laughs> right? Because it was not favorable, they removed it from their belief system altogether and it was known that the Arabs and the Islam, they would actually make fun of Rasulullah Islam when he claims, when he, when he goes around with the Quran and he reads the Quran and he says that it will be resurrected. Right? And there were, there were also Arabs that would come up to Rasulullah Islam right? and they would take, you know, like, like, like dry bone. Right? In the desert, the bones get very dry and brittle. Right, and the, 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 of those believers lah, then and they would crush the bones with their hands in the face of Rasulullah sallallahu right, and like throw it at his face, right, and they would say, right, will this, will this be be raised, of Muhammad, right, this, this dust, you know, these bones and dust will it be raised, and Rasulullah would just calmly say to them, yes, and so will you when you be cast into the fire, right, in, in one smooth statement, <laughs> right, so will you when you be cast into the fire, right, so they, but they used to make fun. They used to make fun. You know, who will bring out these bones? Raya Sin, Eros Raya Sin, Allah SWT mentions it. Eh? Right, who will bring out these bones after they have become dust? And Allah SWT says, Raya Sin, the one who created them in the first place. Right? The second time creation is easier than the first time creation. The first time creation is from nothing. Second time, at least got, got bones. <laughs> right? There's something there. Right? Subhanallah. You know, so, so, I mean, uh, Allah in the Quran shows a lot of uh, amazement in this human being that you think it's so hard to create you again. It's not hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah creates things out of nothing. Right? Do you think it's hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? So the first part of Juz Amma speaks about that a lot. Right? Uh, because Juz Amma is a Jews. Uh, main, majority of the surahs were revealed in Mecca. Which means there was a lot of correction of the aqidah. Right? Accountability and the oneness of God. Right? Two main things. So Tariq eh? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء والطارق وما أدرك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب 
إن كل نفس لما عليها حافظ فلينظر الإنسان مما خلق خلق مما إن دافق يخرج من بين السلب والترائب إنه على رجعه لقادر يوم تبل الص يوم تبل السرائر فما له من قوة ولا ناصر والسماء ذات الرجع والأرض ذات الصدع إنه لقول فصل وما هو بالهزل إنهم يكيدون كيدا وأكيد كيدا فمهل الكافرين أمهلهم رويدا صدق الله العلي العظيم As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tariq And he, and he takes a vow وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقِ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Tariq by taking a vow by the, by the sky and by this thing called Tariq. Right? Tariq, tay Taraqa, it means to come in the night in Arabic. Eh? Taraqa means to come in the night. This Tariq right, is actually a star that appears in the night. It's night visitor, but it's actually a star that appears in the night. We're going to mention in a while, right, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take a Vow by this, uh, by the, by the, by the, by the, by the sky. Firstly, Allah is a vow by the sky. Then Allah Subhanahu is a vow by this star. And Allah Subhanahu wa says, and what will let you know? Right, what is tariq? Right, what is tariq? An najmu al thaqib. Right, it is a brilliant star. Right, thaqib. The word thaqib in Arabic it means a hole. Right, it means a hole. H o l e hole. <laughs> Thaqab right, Thaqab is a Is a Lubang A hole Right This star Is called A Najm Thaqib Right Because it's so Brilliant In the sky It seems as if It's making a hole In the sky Right It's as if it's a, There's a hole Right there In the sky Because it's so brilliant Can you imagine eh? Because it's kind of stars Right There's brilliant in the sky So it's as if As if it's, there are holes In the sky right, Because of this uh, This one star Right So here Right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the sky. Right? And in the sky, of the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of what we find in the sky, right? We, we mentioned, we, we've seen before in Juz Amma, right? in the other part of Juz Amma, Allah swears by the sun, by the moon, right? Uh, uh, and now He swears by the sky. He swears by the dawn, that right? we have taken it from before, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the, uh, the, the morning night, the morning, the morning sky, right? The morning, the doha, right? The morning light. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the sky. Right? And when we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the sky, the sky means anything that is above. All that is above a person is called the sky. Right? That is all that is above you. So a human being can never encompass what is the sky. We can't. Eh? Right? You, have, you can see as many videos as you want to see. Right? Actually up to this point, it's still a lot of speculation. Right? Because they, 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 they don't know. They don't really know right, what is the sky. Uh, even like if you see like the Milky Way, they have all these images of the Milky Way. They have these images of galaxies and whatsoever. It's all, uh, it's all still uh, their own speculation. They can't go out and take picture of the entire thing. They can't. It's too far. They can, they can barely make it past the, the, the nearest planets. They can't. Right? They can just only speculate. All they can do is speculate. And right? by what they see, they just get. They do a lot of uh, speculation. Right? That's, that's all. Eh? Right, so it's all uh, there's a word for it, simulation. It's a lot of simulation about it, but they can't exactly say this is how it works. Same thing right, when it comes to molecular level, they can't actually say what exactly what works and right, what's going on there. It's, also, it's it's still theory. It's still theory. People think that it's it's fact. It's not. It's not fact. It's still theory. And for all you know, it's all wrong. <laughs> right, and why 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 do we not know what's going on in the molecular level? Because molecules are affected by light. They're frankly put They're affected by light And if you want to see something You've got to shine light So how are you going to see it? You're going to, you're going to have an electron microscope Electron microscope means what? Bombarding electrons 
But electrons are going to change the structure anyway. It's impossible for us to observe. Impossible. There's no other way. There's no other way. I used to do it when I was in university. Right? It's really, you, know, you cannot observe something in its natural state. Down to the molecular level, you can't. Right, so all the all the the, the, the diagrams we have, as split up, is all speculation. <laughs> it's just them guessing it, right? Just by their own thinking, lah. Right, of course, they have they, they try to work work it, lah. Allahu alam, right? But same thing with the with the space, eh? So sama was sama iwatorik. Only Allah subhanahu wa taala knows what this, this, these things are. Right, we have like you know all this. You read lah all this stuff about the death of the stars and the birth of stars. If you all read this stuff, I used to read all this stuff. Like, it's like, like, you know, all this like weird knowledge <laughs> inside here. I used to do all these kind of things. It's all speculation. It's really just all speculation. <laughs> I said, Habib Abu Bakr Adani, he said, you know, how much time human beings spend on knowledge that's not real. You know, on knowledge is just basically mere theory, speculation, hypothesis, right? And how much you neglect knowledge that is real and that matters. Which is the hereafter. People spend their entire lifetime trying to figure out space. And then you're wondering why? Why do human beings do this? Right? <laughs> Habib Omar he will say, you know, he will say that you know they, they try so hard right, to get onto the moon, but they don't worship the Lord of the Moon. And you're missing the point. Right? Why do you want to stand on the moon and you don't worship the Lord of the Moon? You're missing the point. All together, <laughs> so sometimes you know, if they spend so much time doing all this stuff, the entire lifetime, and people, have people in this world, or this country spending billions, while there are people in the world who are suffering from hunger, is it, is it, is it even justified? Did you wonder why do human beings do this? Why are we so obsessed about space? Right? It's not that we can change it, <laughs> right? So that we can, what can we do with space? If an asteroid was to come here, what can you do? Collapse, die. You just die. <laughs> right? So you wonder why are they so obsessed and why they spend so much money? And what's going on? And, and, and the thing is that it's not as if we have money to spare. We don't have money to spare. We actually have a lot of suffering in this world. Right? So subhanAllah, when Allah swears by the sky, and the sky is amazing. Right? By the end of the day, right, the sky is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's all it is. Right? It was created to serve human beings, for human beings to, to survive on this earth, for human beings to survive and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's it. Right? And Imam Ghazali says, until we achieve our point of existence, which is worship, right, we are just wasting our time. So all of this you know, space affair uh, is all very expensive play. Right? Human beings on this earth, all they do is play. <laughs> Right, what, what is you know, also in the Quran, what is life of this world except empty talk and play? It's all play. Right? You, you think about it, think about it. This is just ponder. Like. <laughs> Why? Why do they do it? I, know, I wonder. Like, I, I myself, always, when I was young, I, was, I used, used to wonder. It's amazing. And you think about it, it's not even fact. And you think about it, they spend so much money. And you think about it, like, like why do they do that? Right? It's about Allah swears by this, the sky, and it says by Torek. The historic is a night visitor, right? And it's a specific star that emerges, right? This star is a very bright star. I'm not sure what is the English word for this star, right? So, uh, uh, I'm not sure what's the English word for this star, but it's, it's a specific star in the sky. I'm not very good at uh, all this astronomy stuff, right? Huh? It's not exactly the North Star. It's not to be the North Star. Right. Nebulous. <laughs> you thought what you thought, because the Arabs have their own names for stars. They have their own. They have their own names for stars. Eh? Right. So, it, uh, uh, right. Some say it is uh, Suraya. Right. Suraya is one of the stars in the in the sky. Huh? it's got Sirius. Eh, Suraya, Suraya, Sirius. You like to know stars, <laughs> Right, and some of them, and some of the ulama say it refers to every star. Right, every star is in the sky. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the stars. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by stars? Right. We have no idea, actually. The ulama have no comments about stars. Because all they know about stars is that stars is a night map. They know that about stars. Right? That, that you know, if when, when, when it all goes dark, 
the stars are there to guide you in the night. Right? Now in our time, it's a lost science. Actually, it's not lost because all pilots are made to learn the, 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 the mapping of the stars. Right? Because if all fails and they're, and they're, and they're uh, flying the aeroplane, right? if all signal fail, they need to learn how to read the stars to know how to land and where to land. Right? They actually read the stars. Right? So, so because in the, in the sky at night, what are you going to look at? <laughs> right? If everything fails, what are you going to look at? Are you going to look at the stars? Right? And there's too much magnetism up there for them to use a the compass. Right? It's, it's magnetism everywhere in, your, in, a, in, a, in an airplane. So you have to just look at the stars. Right? So, so Allah Alam, right? the, the, the ulama actually do not comment very much about, about why is Allah Subhanahu take a vow right, by the star, right, by the stars and also by the sky. Right? And that could also mean that there's, you, you, don't, you all don't know anything about this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The sky and the, 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 the stars and the skies. Alright. In kullu lamma alay, in kullu, in kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz. Right, so after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a vow by the star and the, and the sky, and I'll go into it in a while, like, uh, or next time, of course, there's a bit more explanation about the star and the sky. So I just want to go into the, the jawab of the qasm, the jawab of the vow. Every vow has a jawab, right? every vow has a response. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the, the vow of the sky and the star, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds by saying, on every human being, there is a guardian. Right? On every human being, right, there is a guardian. And this refers to the angels. Right? Allah brought in the angels. Right? Right? For, 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 so for the human being to see what he was created from, he was created from like a very, uh, you would say, dafiq, like chai, right? very uh, fluidy, uh, fluid, right? water that is very uh, watery right? in a way. Right? So inshallah next week I will continue right, with this right, about the creation of the human being. Right? In Surah Tariq, Allah subhanahu wa speaks about the creation of the human being. Right? And here there are some verses whereby if you know anybody in labor, right, for them to actually recite these verses. Right? So, uh, so the verses is, right, uh, the verses would be, Right, the verse will be Yahuru Mimba in this will be what the right, that is the verse if anybody is in in, 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 in labor to actually recite it. Right, some say to write the entire surah all together. Right, for people in labor to to assist right, the labor. To write surah Tariq all together from the beginning to end. It's a very short surah. It's only half a page. Right, it's a very short surah. Right, so for them to recite the entire surah right, from start to end, if they are actually in labor to assist right, the birth of the child. So inshallah next week we'll continue surah Tariq. Inshallah, one lesson can, we can finish it. And then we'll go into Surah Buruj. Inshallah. Okay. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Al-Fatiha. Anna Allah hirzukna manafi amal khalif al-Islam. Wa dilala ala al-Huda. Wa yusarri bi qabal nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa al-arwahi wa alameena. Wa ma shayikhina. Wa zawi al-hukuki alayna. Wa ila hadr al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر إن الإنسان في خسر الذي نأمن مصلحة وتوسل حق سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين